Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you all for joining us today. My name is Marek Milde, and I would like to welcome you for the today's presentation, Lights, Camera, Action. I hope you all are enjoying the summer whenever you are. We just had a, a tropical storm passing in New York City today. At the Czech Center, we prepared for you exciting summer program, which includes exhibitions and screening on the rooftop of the Bohemian National Hall you can see right behind me. To the high point of our program belongs the video series Highlights from the National Gallery Prague, in which the art historian Veronika Wolf gives us a tour through the collection and talks about major work made by artists of different nationalities that all have a connection to our country. The series presents famous painting by Kupka, Alphonse Mucha, Gustav Klimt, and surrealists like Toyen, but also old masters such as Albrecht Dürer. The series highlights from the National Gallery Prague launched this week on our website, featuring medieval painting of Emperor Charles IV. Today, the second episode about the famous Albrecht Dürer's Feast of the Rose Garlands went up and we will keep posting new episodes every Tuesday and Thursday till the August 10th. So stay tuned for that. This project made by the filmmaker Marco Chiodi is a cooperation between Czech Center's Global Network and the Czech National Gallery Prague. It has been screened around the world in places like Seoul, Tokyo, and Vienna. For the launching of the series in New York, we invited Veronika Wolf so we can learn from her directly about these unique masterpieces, but also to hear how the film series came about. I am very pleased she accepted our invitation and we also will be able to ask her questions. So please use the chat function for that. And now let me introduce her. Veronika Wolf graduated from Palatsky University Olomouc in the history of art. She has also studied Italian art at Ca Foscari University in Venice and art law at Sotheby's Institute of Art in London. She has previously worked at the Peggy Guggenheim Collection in Venice, lived for several years in London and prior to joining the National Gallery in Prague as a director of the external affairs, she was a director of the Lobkowitz Collections in Prague. Veronica has given lectures at the universities in London and Paris and at the museums in Berlin, Moscow, and Singapore. I'm very pleased she's with us tonight. Veronica, please welcome. Hello, uh, Mark, thank you so much for kind invitation and introduction. And uh, I have to say I'm very thrilled to be here tonight in Prague. In this moment, it's midnight. So I sent you greetings from Prague and uh, I'm very happy that I have this opportunity to talk a little bit more about the project uh, highlights from the National Gallery. And uh, as, as, as Mark said, uh, uh, during the summer there will be uh, presented uh, in total 11 uh, short videos about the highlights from the National Gallery. But I would like to tell you a little bit uh, about the project, uh, how it was done, what was the thinking behind, and uh, some maybe more interesting information from behind the scenes. So first of all, we, uh, we as the National Gallery were contacted by Czech Center from uh, Seoul, South Korea, and uh, Tokyo, Japan. Uh, in order to make some uh, short video series for their uh, countries. And so that's why the, the original idea was for the, let's say, uh, Far East. So we were thinking uh, uh, very much in details how to do it because, uh, uh, let's say, those um, uh, people who will watch watch the watch the video series may not be uh, so familiar with uh, European history and some uh, uh, aspects of uh, Czech or European art. And later the project developed that uh, it was 
let's say accepted by um, many other Czech centers around the, around the world. So now it will be featuring uh, uh, for US uh, and uh, later on also for uh, UK, France, uh, Austria, but also Russia and as I mentioned, uh, uh, Japan and uh, South Korea. So, uh, uh, so it's good that the projects kind of was sought through to do it, uh, 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 let's say not to focus on one, uh, one uh, uh, culture and just to do it like uh, that is applicable in international, in international way. And uh, uh, just a few words uh, about the National Gallery. The National Gallery has uh, collections from uh, uh, old masters, or let's say medieval art, then uh, Renaissance, Baroque, uh, to the 19th century, 20th century, and 21st century. So it was obviously very hard to make selection of 11, 11 artworks which should uh, represent the, the collection as a, as, a, as a whole. So obviously it was a hard choice and we have to make, uh, make uh, tough decisions. But uh, there were some key points what we decided, uh, decided to do. Uh, we wanted to focus on two major figures of our history. The first one is Charles the uh, Fourth which was a uh, 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 really important uh, king and the emperor of Holy Roman Empire uh, in uh, 14th century. And then uh, we focused on another uh, uh, emperor who uh, lived uh, in the uh, 16th and 17th century, Rudolf II, and he was a great art collector and Prague was really center of artistic uh, movements and a lot of, a lot of, uh, lot of artists to even moved to Prague uh, to stay at his court. So we just kind of made the, made the second, uh, second, let's say, focus on, on the era of Rudolf II or, or let's say his taste in collecting. And uh, then we moved more to modern art, and there will be a uh, highlight about the about the, the the new Republic of Czechoslovakia, which was established 1918, and uh, about the let's say culture and collecting strategy of this of this new country. And also, we wanted to introduce few artists who uh, who are Czech or who were born in Czech lands, and they 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 made uh, kind of they became internationally famous. So this was the this was the the idea behind. Uh, originally, actually, the uh, there was uh, uh, first source where to present only Czech artists. But later we decided to include some art uh, artists, which uh, already Mark mentioned, like Albrecht Dürer, whose artwork uh, has been in Prague since uh, 1606. And this artwork influenced many Czech artists. So we also decided to include it uh, within, the, within the selection. And uh, without uh, further talking, I will take, take you to my presentation, which will not focus on uh, every artwork, uh, which will be presented later in the videos, but I just, uh, because the time is limited, so I wanted, I, I selected some, some artworks which I saw uh, are the key. So let me take you to the presentation. Let's go at the beginning. Of course, I I would like to tell you if you have any question, if you think about anything during during my talk, uh, please feel free to send it to the to the chat. And uh, at the end of the of the presentation, we will look at it together, and uh, I will try to answer answer your questions. So, so let's go and let's uh, let's let's have a look on this uh, on this lights camera action, introducing the Czech art collection to the to the to the world. So uh, let's see. So on the first slide, I, I I put a picture of Prague, 
which uh, maybe some of you have been there, some of you plan to go to Prague. So, so this is this kind of iconic view of Prague. And uh, uh, if we talk about the National Gallery, uh, the question is actually, where is the National Gallery? Because it is not one building as such, if you you know, if uh, you you name Louvre or you you name uh, other museums, you exactly know the signature building. But actually, uh, National Gallery Prague uh, has uh, uh, seven places where where uh, exhibits its uh, either either collections or exhibitions. So uh, also, we have to think like which which uh, which collections or which buildings we will we will choose. So uh, here I put a kind of small map and maybe you can notice here are some numbers. This is like number first, this is one building and this is three, four, three, four, two, three, four, <laughs> five, six and seven. This is like all like seven buildings spread around, around the city. And uh, uh, I will show you those, only those ones that some, some of the episodes will be from, from these buildings. So this is actually our, oldest building it's a, a 13th century uh, convent and uh, there is a exhibition of uh, medieval art in bohemia and central europe uh, between uh, 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 1200 to 1550 so there is the uh, from this from this location there is the first episode which you could see already about the charles the fourth so then the second place uh, where we where we shot uh, several episodes actually it's a beautiful renaissance uh, building schwarzenberg palais so you have the occasion to see it from outside and this is the ex exhibition inside so there are old masters renaissance and baroque uh, paintings and this is one of the shots of the of the uh, during the shooting so it's at least you see how it looked like kind of backstage and here the painting behind my uh, head uh, the upper painting this th th this is by Roland Savary one of the one of the painters I, I I'm going to talk about tonight briefly but especially there will be uh, one of the of the videos about it and the third building uh, the third building uh, is the Trade Fair Palais, which uh, which is kind of the main building uh, where is uh, the nineteenth, uh, twenties, uh, and twenty first century art. As uh, it's building from nineteen twenties, and as probably the title Trade Fair Palais suggests, it was uh, built originally not not as the museum, but it was built for uh, trade fairs. And this is the this is how it looks inside. So there are like these several uh, galleries, and also the part of the of the exhibition inside. And uh, I could uh, uh, so let's now have a look at the at the at the artworks I would like to talk about uh, tonight. Uh, once again, I put the picture of uh, of Prague. Uh, because uh, I just want to uh, highlight the importance of the Emperor Charles the Fourth, who was uh, uh, sometimes he's called like the the father of the of the nation in a way, and he was really significant uh, significant uh, uh, person for our history and among many, many other things, uh, uh, actually he, uh, 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 the, the bridge across the, across the, across the, uh, the river, the day called Charles Bridge was, was built thanks to him. Also the cathedral was founded here up at the Prague Castle and also uh, the Charles the University was founded. So Prague really became important place uh, in the map of Europe we are talking about the 14th, 14th century. And uh, so that's why I wanted to show you the kind of the landmarks we have in Prague, in Prague uh, today. And uh, uh, when we wanted to include some uh, artwork from, from uh, medieval times, I was thinking a lot how to, uh, what to present because uh, uh, thinking about the, uh, uh, people from uh, from different countries 
and cultures, it may be quite difficult to think about uh, very complicated uh, uh, Christian uh, iconography or iconology. So, so, so we basically decided to focus on the personality of Charles the Fourth. And uh, uh, I have selected the artwork uh, made by anonymous artist, and it's a what if panel of Jan Ochko from Blaschim, because on this panel there is the Charles the Fourth, the emperor. He is depicted himself, so he can we can actually see how he looked like. And as you see, this panel is divided in two parts: the upper and the and the lower. And actually, Charles the Fourth is here on the on the on the upper part. So on the next picture, I just made a closed up. And uh, exactly as uh, uh, people from his time described him, that he had uh, dark hair and uh, and kind of not, he was not really tall. And you know, the description is it's rather fitting to to his uh, his depiction. And here we see him uh, kneeling in front of Virgin Mary. Who is holding the the, Jesus, the infant Jesus, and uh, basically he is uh, uh, kneeling in front of her, and he is sit he is on her uh, right side, which is for us on the left side, but it was actually the hi hierarchically more important side, so he is there. And uh, behind him, it's one of the saints. And uh, on the other side, the other person, the younger man kneeling, it's his uh, son, the Wenceslav uh, IV. And behind him is the son Wenceslav. And on the uh, lower part of the, of the panel, we have actually here the, in the middle, like again kneeling, the the donor or the person who commissioned this uh, this artwork. Uh, it was the second uh, archbishop uh, uh, in Prague. Uh, his name is uh, Jan Ochko from Vlashim. And it's quite interesting if you look at uh, uh, all figures, even the figures which were on the panel uh, uh, before, you see almost the, the whole face. Of, of each figure, but uh, but the uh, uh, Jan Ochko he is he is from the strict profile, and the reason why the artist uh, chosen to depict him in this way it's uh, probably because he could not see on one eye. So so in this very clever way that he depicted him in a strict profile, he kind of avoided the situation that he would have to show him or represent him let's say with one eye, which he, he could not see it. And uh, this is like the, we are seeing the special moment when he's like symbolically taking, taking over the, the like uh, archbishopry of Prague and around him there are other saints. So this was the this was the painting from the medieval uh, medieval time. We wanted to we wanted to show, and uh, I thought it's this is like a really important important artwork, and uh, uh, but we also wanted to focus on on Charles the Fourth, and because I'm talking to uh, to um, to you in the United States, I wanted to mention that there was. Uh, important exhibition in uh, Metropolitan Museum in 2005, which was called Prague, the Crown of Bohemia. And it, it talked about this, about, uh, about the time of uh, Charles IV. And another interesting, interesting thing is that uh, very recently, it was in 2019, that the Metropolitan Museum uh, bought uh, uh, an artwork from the from the from this era, from 14th century, uh, and it was it's a beautiful panel with uh, uh, Virgin Mary uh, with a child on the on the throne, and the painting was uh, recently restored, and something like a beautiful architecture behind uh, was discovered. So if you go on Instagram of uh, uh, Metropolitan Museum, uh, 
it's rather re recent that like uh, three weeks ago or less than months ago, they, they put the results of this restoration. So uh, I have to say that actually in this auction, which was the auction was uh, was in France, in Dijon, also the National Gal Gallery was trying to buy this uh, really important uh, artwork from the time of Charles IV. But actually, uh, uh, Matt was uh, was uh, more successful and uh, has it in the in its collection uh, today. So I just encourage you to check at least their uh, Instagram or to visit their galleries. I'm sure it will be. If it's not on display now, it will be on display soon. So this was the time, the the, the medieval time, uh, the, the the time, the period of of Emperor Charles the Fourth, and uh, now I will talk about the the, the, the second emperor I, I said at the beginning, which is Rudolf the Second. Rudolf the Second was a Habsburg uh, emperor, and uh, he uh, decided to move the court from Vienna to Prague partly because he was uh, worried about the danger which, which was brought by, uh, by Turks. And uh, so he moved to Prague in uh, 1583 and uh, made it uh, its residence. And uh, uh, some historians uh, uh, say that uh, Rudolf II was not as successful as a politician. But uh, from our historical point of view, he was extremely important figure on uh, 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 not only for, let's say, for Bohemia, but also uh, at the scale of the whole Europe, because he was a really avid art collector and uh, made Prague the center of uh, for many artists, but also he invited uh, sculptors and uh, uh, astrologists uh, and uh, goldsmiths uh, and uh, precious gems cutters and really Prague became like the, 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 the culture center of Europe. And uh, not only that, uh, that he, he invited many artists to, to his uh, uh, court, but also he, he tried to collect the best artworks uh, which he could, could uh, uh, find. And uh, this artwork was, uh, which we are looking at, uh, it's done by Albrecht Dürer in uh, 1506. And uh, it was very famous uh, 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 since it was created. Albrecht Dürer, it's, uh, uh, it's a German artist but he made this uh, artwork while he was in Venice for German mer merchants. Uh, uh, they commissioned this artwork to him. It was made specifically for the church of San Bartolomeo, which is close to Rialto Bridge. And uh, the, the painting uh, became very soon a sensation and many people uh, uh, went to see it. And uh, uh, now we move in a time, 100 years later, when Rudolf II was, was uh, in Prague, he really uh, wanted to have this painting uh, in, in his collection. So he was negotiating a lot and he managed to succeed and he managed to buy the painting from, uh, from Venice uh, and uh, he let it transport to Prague. Exactly 100 years later after its creation in 1606, and what is interesting that there were uh, uh, some worries about the stability of the painting, that the painting was very fragile because it's not on canvas, but it's painted on a panel, wooden panel. And that's why uh, the decision was taken that it cannot be uh, uh, brought in in any carriage but uh, several strong men had to literally, literally walk through the Alps and carrying the painting uh, to Prague in order not to damage it at all. So uh, since then, the, uh, the painting was the, like as one of the jewels of Rudolf II collections. And uh, luckily it remained in Prague until, until uh, today. And it's, it's part of the National Gallery's collection and we are very, proud to, to have it. 
and uh, about the figures uh, you will hear more more in the in the video soon uh, what is what is going on on the painting but i would like to uh, mention two things two very interesting things which 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 you will not hear in in in, uh, in the video and one of it one of it is that uh, i don't know if you uh, that uh, actually i will see i will put it on the next next slide uh, here you see the figure under the tree who is holding this this paper and uh, the figure is uh, it's the artist itself and uh, Albrecht Dire depicted himself there among people. Actually, as, uh, when you look at the at the faces, you can recognize that there are portraits of, of, of some people, some personalities of Venice of the time. We cannot say for sure who is who. Nevertheless, we for sure know that uh, that uh, um, that this man holding the holding the piece of paper under the tree is the artist Albrecht Dire. He also wrote there on the paper that that uh, he uh, he is the he is the creator and he signed there and he put the date but what is interesting that uh, or at least the 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 kind of anecdotes from his his era his times uh, uh, they say that uh, that uh, he had actually the coat uh, he is depicted he's depicted uh, in on the painting and and while albrecht direr was in venice he liked to take his clients or potential clients to the to the church of San Bartolomeo, uh, where the where the painting was exhibited or was was uh, at, the, at the as an altar, and uh, and he had the same code. So he kind of uh, wanted to amaze his his clients or potential clients, like that they could see him on the painting, and uh, you know he he was standing in front of them, like like being dressed in very very similar, similar, or the same way, you can say. And uh, the second very, very curious uh, thing, uh, which I would like to share with you is that uh, on the, originally on this painting, and uh, this we know from uh, several copies from 17th century and the latest one, the latest one was uh, in 1823. So let's say the, still in the early uh, 19th century, there was a, a copy, a drawing of the of the painting, of this painting uh, by Albrecht Dürer. And uh, all these copies, they depict a fly, which is sitting on, on a, a knee of uh, Virgin Mary. Uh, we cannot see the fly today, which probably uh, uh, either either during some restoration or uh, maybe the uh, colors, the pigments were, were flaking and kind of it disappeared. But we for sure know that that uh, Albrecht Dürer kind of made this joke and uh, and and put a fly on the on the on the knee of of Virgin Mary. So this was the this was the uh, the kind of uh, favorite uh, or one of the favorite uh, artworks of Rudolf II, and uh, as I mentioned, he he attracted many artists to come to Prague, like uh, Bartolomeu Spranger or Hans von Aachen, or these artists uh, uh, Roland Saveri, whose artwork uh, the the Garden of Eden we are just looking at, and. Uh, uh, actually, uh, Rudolf II was really actively uh, actively uh, inviting uh, uh, artists to his court, and uh, he wanted originally to invite uh, uh, Roland Savary's brother Jacob, uh, uh, who was uh, both of them they were in Amsterdam, but uh, Jacob uh, died uh, because of the Black Death. And uh, that's why his brother, his single brother Roland, uh, uh, went to Rudolf II uh, court, and uh, he became a court painter. And uh, uh, Roland Savary is uh, is famous or well known for his ability to depict in very uh, precise, let's say, zoologically precise way, many uh, uh, different animals sometimes exotic animals uh, or birds or flowers. 
And uh, we also know that uh, Rudolf II, uh, the Emperor Rudolf II, a part of being uh, a bit art collector, he also uh, liked exotic animals and he had uh, menageries uh, at Prague Castle. We know he had a lion and other exotic uh, creatures. Also, he had uh, in his collection a bird from uh, island of Java. So uh, Roland Savary, the artist, uh, clearly had many opportunities how to study these exotic exotic animals and and uh, and uh, master his skills of depicting them. And uh, what is interesting in this in this painting is that uh, as we are looking at the, at the Garden of Eden, there are a lot of animals like the predators and uh, their prey, but everyone lives in harmony, so they don't attack each other. And uh, but the real action in this painting actually it's not happening in at the, at, in front, but it ha it happens in the background. And uh, but I will not tell you what is it exactly because you will learn this uh, once you watch once once you watch the once you watch the video. And uh, so now we will move more towards the modern modern time or more modern time and. Uh, 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 here you see the image from the shooting, uh, uh, the, the episode about the French, French collection at the National Gallery. And uh, this is something uh, extraordinary and something uh, uh, really National Gallery can be proud about that uh, uh, we, we hold this, this extraordinary collection of uh, uh, French art which includes artists such as Cezanne, Delacroix, uh, Monet, Van Gogh, Picasso or Rousseau. And uh, actually uh, what is uh, very interesting, it was not like gradually uh, being collected or, or, or random collection. Uh, it was a really decision by uh, young Czechoslovakia Czechoslovakia was established uh, at the end of the First World War in October uh, 1918. And this young uh, country, young state wanted to play its role uh, not only on the, on the political scene uh, or political map of Europe, but also on the culture, cultural scene or cultural level. And uh, that's why in 1923, the government decided to make a, a huge acquisition of uh, French art for for the for the for the for 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 the state uh, collections and uh, uh, in Prague there was uh, at the time there was exhibition of uh, of uh, French art of 19th and 20th century. Several paintings were bought uh, and sculptures were bought from this exhibition. And uh, uh, afterwards, there was a special uh, special commission established by, by art historians and other specialists who traveled to Paris. And they had the, 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 the beautiful task to buy, uh, to buy, to acquire another artworks uh, from, uh, 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 for, the, for, the, for the collection. And that's why we have these beautiful, beautiful and very exquisite uh, artworks by artists I mentioned. I will show you at least a few pictures we have. Uh, oh, just a second. Yeah, so this is, for example, Paul Gauguin, Escape. And this one is Vincent van Gogh. And the, the painting uh, I, I focus the most on the on the, during the during the during the series is this painting uh, by Renoir called The Lovers, and actually the the uh, Czech government decided to to release the sum of five million Czechoslovak crowns, which at the time was quite extraordinary sum. But uh, once the opportunity to buy this beautiful painting by Renoir uh, uh, arose, uh, uh, extra one million crown was released in order to buy to buy this painting. Uh, so I will show you here uh, this absolute masterpiece of uh, of impressionism. 
And what is interesting that Renoir uh, never lost interest in uh, a human figure, unlike his contemporaries. And uh, on this painting, we, did, we see this, uh, 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 this man and, uh, and woman who were actually the models were, were Renoir's friends. The woman was, was an actress, he was a painter. And uh, uh, meanwhile to us, it may seem that they are just like sitting next to each other, but for the, for the person of that period uh, was, was clear, this painting was clear that, that something, uh, uh, you know, the, let's say more action <laughs> may, hap may happen soon because the lady, she, she, she has no longer her head, which was, you know, she put it down. So it was kind of suggestion that, that, that she's kind of in a relaxed, in a relaxed situation, and, uh, and and if you look at the at the, at the man, he is kind of uh, very very keen on her, and we can observe the the the, the light how beautifully is going through the through the uh, trees and and uh, enlightening the faces of of, of these two. And, uh, and it is really like uh, we see this dynamic uh, brushstrokes, which is like typical for, for impressionism. So, uh, so this, this is uh, one, of the, one of the highlights, but not, not the only one of the, of the French, French collection, uh, which we have at the, at the National Gallery in Prague. And uh, uh, I will move uh, uh, to the to another artist uh, who is Czech, but uh, lived in Paris, but also in the United States. And uh, we are looking at the artwork by Alphonse Mucha, who uh, was born in, uh, it was not Czechoslovakia yet, it was uh, Austro-Hungarian Empire then. And uh, uh, he went uh, later to Vienna and uh, uh, then to Munich, uh, and he became really famous in uh, Paris. And this is the artwork which made him uh, very famous. It's actually a study for the poster uh, for the uh, theater play Gismonda, and, uh, uh, which was made for the famous actress of the time, Sarah Bernat. From, from today perspective, we would say that Sarah Bernat was really celebrity of, of, of the time or of the era. And uh, she, she played uh, uh, the, the, the role of uh, Gismonda and it was very successful. And she wanted to, to prolong uh, the, 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 the play and she needed a new poster, new poster for, uh, for it and uh, the the story, the legend <laughs> say that, that, that the, it was just just during the Christmas time when Mucha was uh, was in the uh, in the in the uh, at his publisher's house with his publisher and and there was uh, there and there, uh, the Sarah Bernat wanted uh, uh, very quickly the the new poster for a new for for her, for her play and 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 uh, Mucha was the only one who was able to do it in very short time basically within a days during the the christmas time because on the 1st of january the her posters were uh, uh, were in uh, uh, everywhere in paris uh, why i'm saying that this is this is a little bit uh, uh, the legend, because as we have the as we have, as we here at the National Gallery or the, the the artwork we are looking at is the study for the poster. So then I assume he may have a little bit more time than not only several hours to do it or days. Uh, nevertheless, uh, for sure there was a short time. And uh, uh, what was so innovative in 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 his uh, in his approach to it that. The, the figure is really, really long. It's actually double the size of the normal poster, which, which, which uh, makes the, uh, the, the female figure even, let's say, more elegant or imposing. And, uh, and in the arch, in the arch around her head, there was actually in, in the final version of the poster written Sarah Bernard, and by her, by her feet, there was a a, a, a place theater de la Renaissance, so it was the it was the place where the where it was featured, 
And this celebrity, Sarah Bernat, was so happy uh, with the poster that uh, then she commissioned uh, uh, or she asked Mucha to work for her for another six years. And he became really famous uh, in Paris. And not only in Paris, uh, in, uh, in uh, United States as well. And he actually decided to, to go uh, to United States. And in uh, 1904, uh, he, went, uh, he went to New York and he was teaching in New York and in Chicago at Art Institute. And he met uh, several important people from his uh, from that era, and uh, uh, one of them was a uh, very wealthy entrepreneur, uh, Charles Crane. And what we are looking at right now, it's a portrait of, of Josephine Crane, which was a daughter of Charles, and uh, Mucha painted this 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 artwork. Uh, during the occasion when she was getting married. Uh, uh, and uh, Charles Crane was very happy about it. And he commissioned a second uh, portrait for uh, his younger daughter. And at that point, Mucha, in his, uh, because in his head was that he really wanted to make a, a huge let's say monumental paintings to, which talk which would talk about the the uh, history of slavic nations and for this ambitious ambitious project or plan he was looking for a sponsor and uh, uh, he understood that 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 this american entrepreneur charles crane is is keen on uh, on slavic uh, culture and slavic nations and he's very interested in it and he actually uh, proposed him uh, this idea of, of creating a special cycle, monumental cycle, which would talk about the uh, Slavic uh, history or history of Slavic nations. And uh, Charles Crane really liked the idea and decided to, to support Mucha in, 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 in his uh, uh, endeavors and, and became his sponsor. And uh, for next uh, 18 years, Mucha was working on this monumental cycle. He returned back to, to, uh, to uh, Prague, or later was living close to Prague, and made, we are looking at, at one of these, of these uh, artworks, which in total, there are actually 20 canvases. Some of them, you see the scale, some of them are, are bigger than eight for six meters. And uh, uh, he was working uh, on it between 1910 until 1928. And when finally it was uh, it was finished in 1928, so he he uh, together with his with his sponsor or patron Charles Crane, who arrived to Prague on this occasion, Mucha gave it to to uh, city of Prague as the as the as the present for the Czech nation. What is interesting, one it was, once it was exhibited uh, in 1928. Uh, if we think about it. The uh, many things happen in the meantime that that the uh, uh, modern artists they were they were working in completely different uh, different way, and uh, Mucha by some was seen as somebody from like uh, 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 not so contemporary let's say or from another another era. Nevertheless, uh, until today, this cycle it's it's uh, uh, it's very much uh, admired by many people. And in 2017, it was on loan. The whole cycle was on loan in uh, Art Center uh, uh, Art Center Tokyo, and uh, it became one of the most visited exhibition of the year in the whole world because in uh, uh, three months, uh, uh, almost uh, 657,000 people uh, have seen the, the exhibition. And uh, I will talk uh, about two more, uh, briefly about two more artists, which are somehow connected also with Paris. 
So uh, the artwork we are looking at now, right now, it's by František Kupka. Uh, and it is called Ballad, uh, Joys of Life. And František Kupka is the pioneer of abstraction. Uh, but uh, uh, we will be talking about too because I thought that uh, he is uh, his uh, development is so interesting and so incredible from symbolist uh, uh, paintings until the, the pure abstraction that uh, that uh, in actually in that episode about uh, Franček Kupka there uh, we are showing these two paintings. So here we see two women very kind of uh, 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 savage we can, we can say on horses and uh, we know that these women are uh, real figures there were two loves of Franček Kupka one was the blo the woman with the blonde hair is the is the da Danish uh, 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 designer Annie Breen uh, who actually by the time Mucha painted this artwork she she passed away already and uh, the, the dark hair woman is the French uh, model uh, Gabriel. So he Kupka, Kupka kind of depicted on this one painting uh, two of his of his laps. And uh, on the next next artwork, uh, I'm showing you the the the, the masterpiece uh, of, uh, of of Kupka's uh, work, which is called Amorpha Fugue in Two Colors, and uh, it was exhibited uh, already in 1912 in Paris at the Salon Datum uh, and uh, in in the Autumn Salon. And uh, uh, it is like a uh, uh, really uh, very important uh, 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 artwork for the whole development of the of the of uh, artistic movements uh, towards abstraction. And we know that there have been a lot of studies for this for this artwork. And Kupka was observing uh, his stepdaughter Andre while she was uh, uh, playing with a ball, and the ball had uh, blue and red colors. And he was observing the, the the dynamic of the movement and the trajectory how the ball was moving, and he kind of captured the, this 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 dynamic of the movement uh, in the in this in this canvas. The, the the painting is rather huge, as you will see on the on this on this uh, on this uh, uh, image, because we are just standing in front of it, and you see how how huge it is. And uh, uh, what I would like to mention here uh, to you that uh, uh, the first director of uh, uh, Museum of Modern Art. Uh, uh, Mr. Barr, who really very early on he recognized the importance of Kupka, and in uh, 1936 he included uh, three artworks uh, by Franček Kupka to the exhibition called Cubism and Abstract Art. And uh, actually, uh, MoMA has uh, uh, several artworks by uh, Fradišek uh, Kupka. Also, thanks to this, thanks to kind of uh, 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 very, uh, uh, how to say it, uh, very. I, I just want to say good taste, but uh, but but the but that Alfred Barr was really visionary visionary director and really could could see could see the the potential and the, and the talent of of, of Franček Kupka very early on uh, already in 1936. And uh, because I was talking, all other all all artworks uh, which 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 we were looking at were were by men. So finally, we have uh, we have a woman here, and it is uh, artist called Toyen. Uh, her real name was Maria Cerminova, and she also lived uh, uh, or spent uh, uh, several many years, a big part of her life in Paris. And here we see a beautiful artwork called uh, Summer, which is from 1931. 
and uh, uh, on the next one it's uh, the, the artwork called Horror because it's done in from 1937 and and uh, in uh, her artworks from from this time there uh, there is uh, you could feel really the fear from the up, uh, upcoming uh, or from the situation which was really complicated just before the second world war and and uh, and if, if 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 you look at it carefully the the scene is rather frightening because we see this kind of object unknown object which is bleeding and then if you look up there are some there are uh, hands but but there are two pairs of hands and uh, and then there is one only one hand you know so you just don't know if it's if it's missing or what happened so so if you more you look at it more you realize that the painting it's really really like give you a lot of a lot of like uh and anxiousness and and this this feeling of 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 something something uh, uh, which we cannot really uh, really say what is it but something frightening it's it's in front of our eyes and uh, because the whole project obviously the whole the, it's not only the person who is presenting it but uh, uh, also there are many other people involved so i wanted to show you the picture of the of the of the director which is uh, which is as already has been said uh, marco chiodi who is uh, italian uh, filmmaker so he was doing all the all the episodes and also i i have to mention at this point uh, my colleagues who were from the national gallery who were helping with the with the project so especially for uh, old masters is uh, uh, Olga Kotkova, who is specialized in on Dierer and Savary and other art, uh, artists, and also uh, other of my colleagues like Monika Švetsibolová, uh, Marketa Hanová, uh, Anna Pravdová, uh, Veronika Hulíková, and uh, many others. I hope I haven't. Uh, 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 forgotten to mention anybody but it was really like a teamwork to uh, uh, teamwork and uh, the last painting we are looking at it's by uh, Gustav Klimt and I would like to mention the, the artwork was 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 on loan to San Francisco uh, quite recently so so maybe some of you had opportunity to see it so this was the last slide of the of the presentation and i see that the time is running running so so i will stop sharing the the presentation and we will look at the if there are any questions you would be uh, you would like to see thank you very much veronica uh, that was very interesting and uh, we will take some questions from the audience now we got some in the chat but before we start, I would be very curious to ask myself, so how was your experience of the pandemic for you and for the National Gallery? Uh, what is the current situation? And are there still some limits on your operation? You currently have a major exhibition about Toyon. What, what your visitors yeah. may expect? Yeah, yeah. So we have some restrictions. Uh, um, uh, so first of all, we are very, very happy that, that the galleries could open for the for the public. And uh, but we have some restrictions about number of visitors. So so uh, uh, you have to ch uh, you have to book the tickets in advance. Uh, and and there are some restrictions that, uh, but which may be for the visitor a good thing because you see, you see, uh, uh, you know, these paintings. Let's say not, it's not so crowded, and also you have to have respirator. So they are there are some uh, you have to wear respirators, but there are some limitations. But uh, overall, uh, we are trying to cope with it and and to make it as 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 uh, pleasant as possible for our visitors. All right, thank you. I look very much forward to go back and see these works once, once I'm back in Prague. Wonderful. And uh, uh, yes, I have here one question. If I can see uh, some of these artists in the collection in the US, uh, where? So there are uh, uh, several artists. Uh, uh, Definitely, Alf uh, Alphonse Mucha. You can see, you can see uh, František Kupka. As I said, uh, he is at uh, 
Guggenheim in New York. He is a, a lot of his artworks are in uh, MoMA for the reasons I, I mentioned, but also in Houston and other other important museums. Also Toyen, it's uh, it's in uh, MoMA and uh, but also from from the from uh, 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 the time of Charles the Fourth. As I said, the Metropolitan Museum recently acquired this important uh, artwork, but also in Morgan Library, there, there is uh, artwork from important artwork from this from this era. So yes, there are there are some places you can see you can see the 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 uh, uh, this art the, the artworks by the artist which we which you mentioned. Uh, so yes. And I have here another question. If we uh, borrowed any artwork from American museums? Uh, uh, yes, yes. Uh, well, what are the transatlantic relationship like? <laughs> so we absolutely uh, love to, uh, for some exhibitions, uh, we are very happy if we have, we have very good collaboration with, with museums from uh, United States. The only question is that it's quite expensive to bring artworks uh, uh, across Atlantic. But uh, very recently we had uh, uh, we had the exhibition. It was last year of uh, Rembrandt, and we had uh, on loan a major artwork by Rembrandt uh, borrowed from Metropolitan Museum. And uh, uh, now we are kind of borrowing back uh, 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 or, or lending, lending back, uh, better to say, uh, one uh, important artwork by Bronzino uh, to exhibition on Medici, on Medici portraits, which will be in, uh, in uh, Metropolitan Museum uh, very soon. I already saw some, some adverts for it. So uh, here we go. I will just say mm -hmm, mm -hmm. when was Czech art most unique, distinguished over Czech artists, always part of larger trends movement in central uh, in Central Europe. Mm -hmm. So it is uh, 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 very good, uh, very good questions. But I think that the the art doesn't know uh, borders. So very often there are some movements that they become uh, they become uh, uh, not only local but more uh, more international. But uh, maybe we could, uh, as the pioneer of abstraction, uh, uh, we could definitely uh, uh, point at uh, Franciszek Kupka, who was who was really one of the first art, uh, artists. Uh, who were working in the abstract uh, abs uh, in the abstract style, and also uh, uh, very significant was Alphonse Mucha because sometimes it's even called like Mucha's style because he really influenced uh, the whole his era and many artists. So this was this was something extraordinary. And and. I would, uh, uh, because the time is running, the one hour is, is gone, but I will answer. So I will answer the, the last question, uh, which is uh, if the National Gallery sells uh, any artworks uh, uh, which we own and uh, if so, what the decision process is like. Actually, uh, uh, unlike uh, the museums in the United States, which uh, I know that uh, sometimes they can decide to kind of uh, uh, sell some artworks in order to buy uh, new ones for the for the National Gallery uh, in Prague or for the whole Czech museums and I believe uh, generally in Europe this is the policy but let's say for Czech Republic uh, uh, once an artwork is in uh, in uh, in uh, our art collection we never we never sell so they are they, this is not the option for our our museums. So I thank you. I thank you very much for your attention. Many of you, or I see many of you here. So uh, I hope I, I made you a little bit more interested in in Czech art, and uh, I hope that you will you will learn uh, even more from those uh, videos which are about to come. 
uh, uh, during the, during the during the summer. And if you would have uh, any other question you would like to ask me, you can always find me on LinkedIn or other other uh, platforms, and I will be happy to answer answer your questions. So thank you so much for having me tonight, and I really wish you beautiful beautiful summer. Thank you very much, Veronica. That was so very interesting. Uh, we enjoyed your presentation very much. And we'll follow the next episodes of, of the film series. Uh, again, they will be posted on our website uh, every Tuesday and Thursday till the August 10th. So thank you all for joining us today. And also thank you to the Czech Centers and the National Gallery Prague for collaborating and support. And before we say goodbye, I would like to invite you to the upcoming events of the Czech Center. Uh, on August 5th, we will have another Zoom talk uh, relating to the series about Toyen and Czech surrealism with Karla Hubner, Professor of Art and Art History at Wright State University. Um, but most importantly, you can now visit us uh, in person. Uh, you can visit our gallery to see the exhibition Changlishman in New York that is mapping the period the composer Bohuslav Martinu spent here in the US. Uh, we are open every Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday, uh, 1 to 6 p.m. And you can find more on our website and I hope to see you all soon again and please keep in touch and stay tuned for our upcoming program. Thank you again and good night. <laughs>